प्रभु ईसा मसीह में प्यारे मित्रों द गॉस्पल वी हर्ड टुडे इज से इन मार्क चैप्टर नाइन वर्सेस टू टू एट द ट्रांसफिगरेशन इज ए गो once i was preaching on this particular passage in one of the english parishes in canada during my tenure there you know in foreign countries whether in europe or america or canada or australia after the celebration of the holy kurbana the celebrant stands at the main entrance of the church and greet the people and the people come and shake the hands and say good morning how are you father and sometimes people also make some comments about the homily oh it was amazing it was wonderful it was marvelous that point was good father like that different comments they make and once uh, as i said when i preached this passage and one man greeted me and told about uh, my homily of the day and he said good morning father thank you very much for your boring homily that was his comment thank you very much for your boring homily and then he left and there was a reason for him to tell that my homily was boring so we get a res- different response about our homily you know i remember once another fellow came and told me your homily was really hurting probably it might have hurt him somewhere i don't know and every homily is like that right? you should uh, with the conscience of persons not simply tell you oh, it was marvelous wonderful amazing all this it should be hurting the people in the heart it should pick up conscience creates it should create a change a transfiguration a transformation in the person and this particular man said uh, that my homily was boring there is a reason for that because that day i preached on this particular passage which said with an uh, analogy from my own personal life and the analogy was like this you know when i was in ernakulam i was in a parish called thabo the place name is called thabo near mokannur near angamali one of the priests in uh, the diocese of ernakulam angamali when he met me once he told me father a frame how is your boring experience in thabo that was his question how is your boring experience in tabor but then it was a surprise to me because uh, uh, my experience in tabor was quite good the people are good parish is also financially good accommodation good water is there so i was always happy there for 3 years i was parish priest day i had a very good experience in tabor never was a boring experience. so i asked his father you know what do you tell me ask me that uh, your boring experience in tabor actually this priest was just kidding making fun tabor you know simply boring experience he did not mean anything that was over with that our conversation but later in one of my meditations in the morning this father's question came to my mind how is your boring experience in thabo it was a distraction indeed but then i started reflecting or meditating on my distraction this thabo thabo boring experience so this word bore came to my mind you know the bo- word bore has two meanings as a verb is a bore well uh, boring as i said you know something is not very interesting very dry it's called boring yeah? 
the boring experience. And the second meaning is used as a compound word, bore well, bore well. That means we are boring a well and then we get a good water. So these two meanings are there for this word in English. So that particular day when I preached, I explained this experience and told this, the gospel passage, the transfiguration. Jesus going, Jesus going up to the mountain with the apostles, Peter, John and James. And you know, mountaineering is not an easy task. Huh? It is a lot of energy we need. We get tired, we get thirsty, hungry, sometimes angry also when things, you know. Recently I saw somewhere in uh, Arnajal Pradesh, the polling booth agents are going to a interior village. They are climbing a mountain. There are 280 uh, waters are there and uh, police officials and uh, polling booth agents are Literally, they are climbing the mountain. They are hanging on the tree and then climbing and going up to the mountain. Some place very slippery also. It's not that easy task to climb the mountain. In that context, I explained this boring a well. You know, boring a well, when you bore a well, first what comes is all dust. And then we get uh, mud and then muddy water. And then at last we get either minerals or uh, good water, clean water. It takes time. Sometimes some bore wells are uh, three, four, five, eight hundred or in thousand or more feet deep. It's a long time. A lot of noise. The whole area is all dust. But still they had to go on doing it. At the end only they get good water or minerals. When you, for the minerals, we call it excavation. So I explained this one and I told this, the apostle and Jesus went up to the mountain and their journey going up to the mountain was not that easy. They were tired, they might have been tired. They were sitting and resting and then thirsty, hungry, at last they reach there. You know, once you reach the top of the mountain, those who are going to Malayatu and all that, you know, is climbing is not that easy. Once you reach there, there is a good breeze. And to see around, beautiful. And we can rest. It is that resting time, Paul is, uh, Peter is telling Jesus, it's good to be here. Let's make three tents. One for you, one for Elias, and one for Elijah. It's a beautiful experience they had. Before reaching that beautiful experience, they had these troubles of climbing the mountain. Before getting the clean water from the well, they have the troubled waters or troubled experience of muddy water, the dust the noise and tiredness. But after all that, they have this experience, the divine experience. The transfiguration is a beautiful instance from the Gospels where they had this divine experience of Christ. And the evangelist narrated the dazzling white, his dress, and then the the two prophets are with Jesus. A beautiful experience of divine presence. And in this divine presence, now Peter and the apostles don't want to go down. They want to be there. That's why Peter is raising his voice and telling Jesus, let's have here. It's very good to be here. Divine experience. It's an indwelling experience of triune God. Now they don't want to get out of it. To be there. But to reach to that experience, they had to take a lot of troubles. Now the point is, when we want to have in a boring a well to have a clean water, 
We need to spend time. We need to be tired. We need to take troubles. We need to accept this dust and muddy water. And persistently, patiently we had to bear all these troubles and at the end we have this clean water. When you boring the well, in between is all dust, all muddy water, let's stop it. You are not going to get a clean water. Jesus and disciples, apostles going up to the mountain and between telling that, oh, this is trouble, so let's come down. They would not have that divine experience. It is in this context that man told me, Father, your homily was really boring. Some divine enlightenment, he got it. Now the point is, now we are in three days of our, what do you call, the workshop on evangelization. And these three days is not enough to become an evangelizer. This is only a first step. Different phases are there. As we go through the Bible, we have a number of instances. Take the Old Testament and New Testament. Take the example of Moses. He saw this, the burning bush. He did not understand. It is troublesome for me. What is happening? But he did not stop there. He continued to know what it is. And he listened to the voice. Often what happens in our life is that when there is some frustrations, obstructions, temptations, objections in life, we stop. We turn back. Moses did not turn back. He waited there. And then the revelation comes. When Jesus appeared to the apostles, Thomas was not there. Later, in the presence of Thomas, again Jesus appears. And Thomas raised the objection. And that objection deepened his faith. We know it, my Lord and my God. Saint Peter denied Jesus three times. It is that denial deepened his faith. So like this, so many instances in our life where we face frustrations, objections, hindrances, obstacles. But you have to wait patiently. Perseverance is very important in our ministry, in our commitment, in our faith formation. We cannot uh, return, go through the sacrament of baptism, we are called, we are instituted, and we are sent. That's what we read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, which we read yesterday, the passage where Jesus called the disciples. And he called them to be with him, to send out and to drive out demons. That to be with him is not an easy task. Thomas Wall in the last talk was telling us to have more adoration, more prayer life. Prayer sometimes becomes dry, boring experience in the beginning. We have to wait patiently and persistently. Persistence in prayer is very important. And this persistence only will take us to the divine experience. In the Mount, the Transfiguration experience, the disciples had this. Those who have seen some of the movies with, about Jesus, when the disciples climb up to the mountains, they show their restlessness. That's why they went to sleep. They were not ready for this task. But at the end, when they were persisting with Jesus, they had that experience of Christ. In your life and my life, this persistence 
in prayer is very important in adoration is very important we cannot stop to hear the incidents from ujjain we cannot stop at the one instance of uh, attack i remember long back uh, there is a particular sister i don't remember her name an sd sister in punjab when she was attacked by the dacoits and she was in the hospital in jiwadeh hospital in delhi i happened to be there and i went to meet her and uh, all those who went there consoled her and then some asked her what's your future plan and she told i'll go back i was attacked there i'll go back to the mission where i came from you know that father who was attacked in uh, father uh, i don't remember his name father in yemen his supi his provincial told him you don't need to go back you can take another ministry but he told if you send me i'll go to yemen he was under the dacoits or the custody of this enemies for almost more than one year but still he was ready to go back and that is the genuine commitment of a missionary there will be in our life as religious as priests all these frustrations god is confirming our faith confirming our commitment confirming our vocations we cannot fail in our in the exams god gives us every failure is a stepping stone to success in our uh, daily life we fail in the exams in fail so many things we go to railway station to catch the train and the train passes we don't get it frustrations in the airports in the bus stations but we cannot go back we have to wait for the next bus wait for the next train book the ticket go ahead we cannot go back because we have set on a journey a person who is convinced of christ's presence with him will always go move ahead when he is doubtful he will go back god is always supporting him that's why you know prayer is a great see what's important prayer should not be part of our life prayer should be heart of our life prayer should be heart of our life not a part of our life praying in the morning half an hour praying in the afternoon for half an hour praying in the evening no no 24 hours we have to be prayer conscious st paul says in the letter to thessalonians he says pray unceasingly constantly which means we have to live a prayer conscious life a life immersed in prayer not necessarily always having rosary in the hands and bible in the ampit not necessarily but we are always conscious of god's presence actually prayer is to be in the presence of god that's prayer to be in the presence of god god is everywhere god is everywhere but in particular way god is present in the holy eucharist that's also important so we can pray everywhere prayer conscious person will have always the presence of god in his mind whatever he does whatever he thinks whatever he see whatever he speaks is always in the presence of god so you'll be careful what he speaks is something like a, a driver he is always careful in his driving when he knows that a policeman is somewhere near a traffic police the presence of the policeman makes him to be careful in driving is something similar to that the presence of god help us to be good to be careful to be prayerful to be committed to be sincere to be hopeful to be cheerful all these qualities can be can emanate from us then as we started the talk you know 
Second Corinthians chapter 2, 15. There will be fragrance. There will be fragrance. And if there is fragrance, people will feel it. That's what Saint uh, Pope Francis speaks about the smell of the sheep. So as we are in this uh, experience of this worship and evangelization, as we reflect on this passage of transfiguration, this we need to continuously pray for this boring experience of God, going deep and deep into God experience. There will be obstacles, there will be hindrances, there will be objections, there will be attacks, there will be frustrations in life, there will be boring, that experience, the first meaning of the boring, all these will be there. But we need to be persistently going ahead. We need to be going ahead patiently. It needs more patience. How much Jesus suffered when he had attacks, when he was persecuted. It was terrible for him. And his prayer at Gethsemane. If possible, take away this cup. But not my wish. Thy will be done. And he went ahead. So we need to seek the will of God every moment of life. If that mind set up is there, then what may come doesn't matter, we go ahead. As we heard from today, you know, the, we are kept up, hands in the plow. There's no, no question of turning back at all. And support of prayer is very important. Holy Mother Church has given a different means to embellish, to nourish our faith and our commitment. Of course, the prayer, reading of the Bible, adoration, the sacraments, the good charitable acts, all these are embellishing our, our ministry, our commitment, our faith, our vocation. So my dear fathers, sisters, Thomas Paul and my dear friends, let's take this message, this persistence and patience in prayer. God has his own time to come to our assistance and we have to wait until then to get his assistance. We cannot dictate to God, can, but it is in the fullness of time, the plenitude of time, things happen. So let's take this message of persistence in prayer and patience and to have a boring experience, a deeper experience of God as Peter, James and John had. Then we can also very happily say, it's good to be here because this is a divine indwelling experience of God. And we need to have that experience. And this is a not one-time task. It is a continuous task. I remember long years, years ago, I was preaching a retreat to CMC sisters in Trichu. And I said, one of the things that we need to pray every day is perseverance in vocation. Perseverance in vocation. And this particular sister was already 72 years, a retired principal of a college. She's retired almost for uh, uh, 10, 12 years. She came and told me, Father, I, am a, I have a doctorate in, uh, in uh, literature, English literature. I am a principal, I was a principal for 30 years. Now I retired for 12, 13 years. Now still I should pray, I'm only 72 years old. Still I should continue the prayer for perseverance and vocation. I asked her a question, Sister, have you any assurance, certainty that you will die as a sister? You will not leave your sisterhood. That paused her for reflection. Any moment, it is those days, it so happened there was one Father Manakil from the Diocese of Verapoli. 
He left priesthood at the age of 82. I remember we had one father, Picardo, a Jesuit priest who was a missionary in Africa for 45 years. He came back to India. I was resting in the seminary where it is my theology, that is in Mangalore. We celebrated 60 years of priesthood. He was already 87 that time. He could not stand to say the Mass. He was sitting for the Mass. And for greeting time, he told us, you know, he was 87 years old, 60 years as a priest. He was asking the seminarians, brothers, please pray to, for me that I may persevere in my vocation at the 86. Vocation is a gift given in a fragile mud pot. Anytime it can be broken. Without prayer, we cannot continue our vocation. It's only prayer that cherishes and nourishes our vocation, our commitment, our faith. Any priest or any religious, they go away or they leave priesthood or religious life. It's only because of lack of prayer. It's only because of lack of prayer. So prayer is the nourishing lifeline for our vocation, our commitment, our ministry. So let us pray for these three, three charisms or three gifts or three things. The first is a boring experience of Christ, a deeper experience of Christ in our personal life. And the second is to persevere in our prayer, in our vocation. And third, to pray patiently. We may have a boring experience, but still pray patiently. With these prayers in mind, let us continue the celebration of this divine liturgy. God bless you all. हम सब आनंद और उत्साह के साथ प्रार्थना करें और बोलें, हे प्रभु हमारी प्रार्थना सुन, हे प्रभु मसीह तो मार्ग सत्य और जीवन है, तू अपने शक्ति से हमें अंधकार से प्रकाश की ओर, असत्य से सत्य की ओर, और मृत्यु से अनंत जीवन की ओर ले चल, हम तुझसे विनय करते हैं, हे प्रभु मसीह तूने अपने क्रूस के मृत्यु द्वारा शाप के चिन्हों को मसीह का चिन्ह बनाया यह कृपा दे कि हम अपने शरीर की बुरी वासनाओं को क्रूस पर चढ़ाए और आत्मसमर्पण में अनंत जीवन पाए हम तुझसे विनय करते हैं हे प्रभु मसीह तू भला गडेरिया है ऐसी कृपा दे कि हमारे अधिकारी लोग अपने अधीन के लोगों को तेरे पुनरुत्थान की महिमा तक पहुंचाए हम तुझसे विनय करते हैं हे प्रभु मसीह तू गरीब और नम्र बना हमारा नम्र निवेदन है कि गरीबी और बीमारी में पीड़ित लोगों को और सत्य के प्रति दुख भोगने वाले लोगों को तू अपने महत्वपूर्ण पुनरुत्थान का स्मरण दिलाकर उन्हें अपनी जिंदगी की दौड़ पूरी करने में और विश्वास को सुरक्षित रखने में मदद कर हम तुझसे विनय करते हैं हे प्रभु मसीह तो परमेश्वर के सामने हमारे लिए सनातन समर्पण है ऐसी कृपा दे कि हम तेरे पवित्र बलिदान में भक्ति भाव से सहभागी होवे और पुनरुत्थित जीवन के दिव्य रहस्यों को हम योग्यता पूर्वक स्वीकार करें हम तुझसे विनय करते हैं हम सब अपने आप को और हर एक अपने आप को पिता पुत्र और पवित्र आत्मा के दिव्य चरणों पर समर्पित करें समर्पित करते हैं